man. The thought came to me, making no deals with demons. Don't make deals with demons. Amen. 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 1 Corinthians 16, 9 says, For a great and effectual door is open unto me. There are many adversaries. That effectual means an active or powerful door. So God opens a door for all those in ministry. And you're in ministry if you're in the body of Christ. Right. A lot of people don't understand that. Well, all I do is come to church, sit there, stay 30 minutes, hear a sermon, and go back home, and nothing else will require me. Yes, there is. Right. Every one of us has a testimony to share with someone. Yep. And people can uh, look at your testimony, and some of them can say, wow, that was the same situation I was in right. at one time, and, yep. and if they can get delivered, I can get delivered. Amen. But the devil's always going to try to get you to make a deal with him. Right. He tried it with Jesus, didn't he? Yep. Yep. He constantly tries it. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted and tried in all points, even as we were, yep. but yet he did not sin. Amen. So all of us are going to be tempted, tried, and, and, and sometimes the enemy is going to confuse us because that's what he's about, confusion. Right. And the Bible says confusion is not of God. Yep. Yep. Sometimes he's going to condemn us, and the Bible says that we're not condemned. Those that are in Christ don't live under condemnation because Christ has delivered us Amen. from that sin and from that condemnation. Yep. You mean I can do anything and not be condemned about it? No, you can do things and be convicted about it. Right. <laughs> There's right. a difference. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit convicts you of things, that means you need to leave that alone yep. and take the opposite direction because you're walking the wrong way. Right. We're going to look at the Word of God this morning, and there's a story, and there's types and shadows in the Word of God. How many realize that? You can go over to the Old Testament and look at some things, and you can find in the New Testament that relates to that. Right. And so there's types and shadows. And in the book of Exodus, you'll find that Moses called to free the people of Israel. And God said to Moses to go down and tell Pharaoh, God said, let my people go. Amen? Yep. That's what ought to be said today in every church across America and yep. across the world. God is saying, let my people go. That doesn't mean the government's going to agree with you. That doesn't mean that people are going to agree with you. But God says, let my people go. Amen. And let my people make no deals with demons. Amen. 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 Let my people realize that they're in the last days and they need to realize that they need to get up and get out yep. and get as many souls saved Amen. as they can. The Lord. Jesus said, you look into the fields and the fields are ripe and ready for harvest. They're white unto harvest. And, and that really means that almost the harvest time is past. Right. Almost time is over. And if Jesus said that then, no. where do you think we are now, right. 2,000 years later? Right. But he said that you need to go out into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. And then we baptize them. Amen? Amen? And then we lay hands on them. They receive the Holy Ghost. And they lay hands on them. They get healed from their sicknesses, and, and, and they speak with new tongues, amen, and they, they have divine protection, they can right. take up serpents, but they don't mean run out and grab a snake, right. amen, right. Uh -huh. the devil told Jesus, jump down, the angels are in charge of you, at least you dash your foot against a stone, what do you say? Tempt the Lord, thy God not. Yeah. Amen. Right. I'm not going to do that. Right. So we got to realize, you got to use some common sense mm -hmm. when you read the Word of God. Amen. you got to use what God gave you, and He gave you common sense. Amen. Yeah. Right. So Moses was uh, put in the uh, river of Nile, and, and he was put there by his sister. And then a uh, lady come along that was a lady of uh, prominence, and she heard the baby crying, and she went over and got it. It was actually Pharaoh's daughter, and she got it and brought it back, and the young lady gave it to her, and she said, do you want me to go get one of the Israeli women to feed the baby? And she said, yeah, tell her I'll pay her. So here's Moses' mama getting paid to feed him. But he was raised up in the palace for 40 years, and he became prime minister of Egypt. Very prestigious uh, 
order and then he was in and learned uh, from their schools and from their people and he was very wise but it came a time when he began to realize brother charles he said i'm not uh from egypt i'm not from egypt these are not my people so let me go out and see how my people's doing yeah. and when he went out there you got to realize his sister was probably working out there his brother was working out there aaron and he had family no doubt working out there and what's the bible say he seen two Amen. Striving against one another. And one was an Egyptian and one was an Israeli. And he killed the Egyptian and buried him. And the next day, he seen two striving one another. They're both Israelis. And they said, hey, you know, you killed that guy, you're going to kill me. So he ran, didn't he? Yep. And he ran to the backside of the desert. And he was there for another 40 years. Yep. The point is, he's 80 years old now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. I'm 75. Moses was 80 years old when he was standing at the burning bush and God said, go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Right. Amen. Right. Let my people go. Why? So that they may serve me. Look at Exodus 8, 1. Thus saith the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. God did not deliver you to serve right. the devil. Amen. He delivered you so you could serve him. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. And we, we put so little importance upon coming to church, upon upon witnessing when we're outside the church, upon living a Christian life and keeping our attitude right and our conversation pure. Right. We put so little importance upon that stuff, but people are looking at you. Yep. And I assure you, amen, over the 50 years I've been preaching, one mistake will follow you all your life. Come on. No matter how much good you do yep. throughout your life. Yep. So we always have to be cautious. We can't make any deals with any demons. Right. The devil will always try to trick you up so he can get something on you so that you, amen, will fall and others will fall behind you. Mm. Even Jesus said, if they slay the shepherd, the sheep shall yep. scatter. Moses, when he went down there and he approached Pharaoh, probably in Moses' mind, he said, now, God's told me to go down and say, let my people go. So when I tell Moses, or tell Pharaoh that, he's going to shake and tremble in his boots. I got a message from God. Man, old Pharaoh is going to sit on the throne and just shake and tremble and get scared because God sent me. Uh-uh. No, it didn't happen. Moses didn't shake, uh, Pharaoh didn't shake, nor tremble, amen. And, and, and we realize that, that the devil is going to uh, obey God. That's why he was thrown out of heaven in the first place. Can someone say amen? amen. amen. So in Exodus 8, 25, it says, And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye sacrifice to the Lord your God in the land. Mm -hmm. yep. In the land. See, if you got any spiritual discernment whatsoever, you would take this a look at it in the land. What is in the land? In the world. So you can go sacrifice, but make sure you do it in the world. We got a lot of churches today that are so worldly, you can't even tell they're a church anymore. Right. Amen. You can't tell that they have anything anointing or anything else that's going to shake the, the gates of hell. You can't see, see any conviction come upon people when they're preaching the gospel. Now, we got a lot of good churches out there, but there's a lot of churches that are compromised right. with the devil. Well, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the yeah. devil doesn't get afraid in church. He comes to church. Yeah. Amen. He's not afraid of church. He's afraid of Jesus Christ. He yeah. shakes and trembles at the very name yeah. of Jesus yeah. Christ. Uh, hallelujah. Because he knows he's defeated. Yeah. Uh, he was defeated on the day that Jesus Christ was on the cross and gave up his life for my life and your life. Amen. And somebody praise the Lord. Amen. We sang that song, amen. He conquered death because he did. Yep. And because he lives, we can live also. Yeah. Amen. amen. So he told him, you can go ahead and sacrifice, but make sure you stay in the land. Yeah. I mean, don't get too churchy. Don't get too wrapped up in this thing. Because you're going to be an outcast. Well, the Bible said God does build up Jerusalem, amen. He builds up Israel from out 
outcast people. Yep. And he heals them and binds up their broken hearts. Uh, God is looking for some outcasts. Amen. We may see people, amen, that's tattooed and got piercings everywhere. And we may think, well, we need to throw them out. Amen. Uh, no, God, don't throw anybody out. The amen. Bible says if you come to him, uh, yes. amen, he would no wise turn you away. Hallelujah. Amen. That call goes out to everybody, the drug addict, yep. the prostitution, uh, prostitute, the adultery, or fornicator, or anybody else. That call, amen, goes out to every human in the entire world. Hallelujah. If you want to be saved, you can be saved. Yes. Amen. But make no deals with demons. Amen. And somebody amen. say amen. That's right. Amen. If you look on to Exodus 10, 9, it says, Moses come back and said, we'll go. But we're taking our young. Verse 59. And with our old, with our sons, and with our daughters, with our flocks, and with our herds, we will go. Mm -hmm. We're going to take everything with us, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. This is what God said to us. We're going, we ain't leaving our children, amen, to you. We ain't leaving our old folks to you. We're not leaving our sons and daughters to you. Amen. That's what's happened, Sister Kim, to the church and to the world. We've left them to be babysitted by right. television, social media, right. and everything else. And they are so confused, they don't even know if they're male nor female. Amen. We're living in a society, amen, that's mixed up and messed up. And it didn't come overnight. It came through a process of time. Right. You remember when, when the uh, homosexuals, all they wanted was their rights. Mm -hmm. But then when they started marching in the streets, they said, we're coming for your children. Yeah. See, it was more about rights. Eh? Not more about rights. It was about the devil, amen, and making de uh, deals with the demons. You yeah. cannot do that because it always progresses into something that's even worse than the first. That's what the Bible says. If a man comes to the Lord and he goes back out and the last day of that man is worse than the first. Why? Because that demon that left him goes out and gets seven more that's more wicked than himself, comes and inhabits that clean temple, amen, and the last day of that man, the Word of God says, is worse than the first. But we've left our children that way. Yeah. Didn't raise them the way they were raised. You know, our parents, some of them weren't even Christians, but we got raised differently, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Guess what? No, man. No. No. Amen. And guess what? You didn't ask a thousand times yeah. until you wear somebody out. Because yeah. the only thing that wore out was you. Yeah. Yeah, amen. When you fit, uh, heard that belt go through the loops of the <laughs> pants, amen, and, and all of a sudden you began to do that circle dance, yeah. you know, <laughs> Belt one hand, your hand, your dad's hand, he started whacking you, doing a dance all around him. Yeah. Amen. But see, kids are not raised that way. Amen. Kids are raised now, just do anything you want to do, and it's okay. <coughs> but Moses said, No, that's not going to work. We're going to take our young. Mm -hmm. We're going to take our old. Yeah. We're going to take our sons. We're going to take our daughters. And guess what? We're going to take our flocks. And we're going to take our herds. Because we got to go. And everything has to go with us because we're going to make a feast unto the Lord and we don't know what to give until we get that. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Some folks come to church and they know exactly what they're going to give when they get that. Yeah. Now, I'm not just preaching to you. We're preaching Facebook and YouTube, so we're not uh, X and we're not just preaching to you, but a lot of people come to church they got that one dollar folded up in that pants pocket, amen, or, or in that little secret compartment in their purse, and they know exactly what they're going to give, and a lot of them praying, probably the first time they prayed all week, that they don't come by them. You know, sometimes the ushers will miss you, and they're praising God over that. Let me tell you something, stingy folks are going to inhabit hell. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? amen? You believe that or not? The Bible says the fearful and unbelieving yeah. are going to hell. Yeah. That's in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're so afraid of giving, you're fearful. Yeah. And if you're at a point where you don't believe God can bless you, then you're unbelieving. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? So where's that falling? Fearful yeah. and unbelieving. I don't know how many people have had quit church because they said you can't afford to come to church. Yeah. Church doesn't cost you anything. 
You're not giving and you're not participating is what it costs you. As we studied Wednesday night, Jesus said, I mean, the Word of God said, I will curse your blessings. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, God said, I've already cursed them. Mm -hmm. See, when you don't do what the Lord tells you to do, the curse comes. Yeah. Yes. But if you do what God tells you to do, He drives away the devourer. Yeah. That, that stove that you thought was going to go out didn't go out. Yeah. The car you thought you was going to have to spend a ton of money on didn't break down. Amen. 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 All these things that you thought, amen, might happen didn't happen yeah. because God was there. One, one, one sickness, major sickness, can bankrupt you. Amen. But God keeps you healthy. Amen. Keeps you whole. Yeah. Has somebody to be there to love you through it. Amen. Amen. When my wife first started going through it, God spoke to me and said, love her through it. I, I haven't done... Uh, had been great success with that all the time, but but you know I try, amen? amen. So that's all you can do, and that's all God requires of you. Yeah. But you know He said we're taking everybody. That's wonderful that that a man of God would stand up to hear Pharaoh himself and tell Pharaoh, no, I'm not going to cooperate with you. Mm. You ain't God, yep. amen? amen. You ain't God. So we're going and we're going to make a feast and we're going to sacrifice to the Lord and we don't know what to give until we get there. Mm -hmm. So when you determine what you're going to give before you even get to church, amen, that's not something you should do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, sh you should be listening to the Lord all through the week, amen, and mm -hmm. when you get to church, you should already be prepared to give what God has spoke to you, amen? amen. Chapter 10, verse 10 says, And he, Pharaoh, said unto them, let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones look to it for evil is before you. Still compromising, eh? I'm going to let you go and you can take your little ones but man, you're in trouble if you do. Evil's before you. Things are not going to work out like you want them to. You know, you better be afraid, Moses. Don't do that. No, Moses is not afraid at all. Because Moses has a mandate from God. Amen. Amen. Moses already knows that he's standing in that burning bush and God yeah. told him, you go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Amen. Amen. Moses tried to make an excuse that I can't talk good. Amen. God said, well, i got an error on the way. He's going to be a mouthpiece. He'll be like the prophet and you'll be like me. I'll tell you what to tell him and he'll tell you Amen. And he heard you and you, you heard from God and you can tell Pharaoh. Amen. 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 God always has a way. Yeah. Just like with Abraham. Yeah. When he sacrificed, was going to sacrifice Isaac. There was always a ram in the bush, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. As he was going up one side of the mountain, Brother C, that ram was probably coming up the other side of the mountain. Yes. Just as he got ready to plunge that knife into Isaac's uh, chest, that lamb began to let him know that there was there, that ram. Amen. So chapter 10, verse 10 says, The Lord said unto them, You can go. Don't let your little ones go. And even if you take them, there's evil before you. And then verse 11 goes on to say, Go now ye that are men and serve the Lord. Leave the little ones here. Don't let something happen to them. Amen. And today in our society, we've left the kids alone. When I worked at the high school, I could not believe how dumbed down children were. And usually, you, you didn't have to look far to see why they were so dumbed down, because the parents were pretty dumbed down themselves. Mm -hmm. Some of them couldn't tell time. Some of them couldn't write their own name. This is high school I was in. Same high school I went to. You'd have never got away with that stuff in yeah. high school when I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Ask me, because they threw me out several times. <laughs> So you never get away with that stuff. But here we are. Today, that place was a place where gangs inhabited and they sold drugs on every corner of the, of the school. Amen. They had their own place where they were selling drugs. And we'd catch them all the time. I made more drug best, uh, busts there than I ever made on the streets. But I said, you can go and leave the kids here. Look at your kids. See, the only thing we can do as Christians is raise our kids up. Oh, right. Right. Amen. Right. Yeah. Train them. Yeah. And that word train is a military word. Yeah. 
That means that when you're in the military, you can get trained right. Amen? At least you used to. I don't know now about all the stuff they're doing now. But when I was in, it was a hard, disciplined military. And you did what they told you to do without any questions. You didn't say, Sarge, I don't feel like it today. I think I'll sleep in. No, you didn't. You know what happened if you slept in? Your bed was turned over. You had to take your foot locker, put it on top of your head, and run outside with it. That's what happened. Then you stood in rain, pouring down rain, with the M14 shouting, kill, 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 till you thought you was going to kill everybody else that was standing there. They programmed you. They trained you. Because they knew you were going to fight an enemy, and you were going to have to be hardened to the fact that that enemy was going to try to get next to you and defeat you. And that's exactly what the devil does. Amen. He looks at everything that's going on in your life and he, he picks that thing that he knows will bother you the most. Right. And then he goes after it. Yep. Amen. Don't sell for anything else except total salvation for your entire family. Let my people go, all right, but stay in the land, our world. Let my people go, all right, but leave your children. 1024 says, And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord, only let your flocks and herds be stayed. Let your little ones go also with you. Now he's changing his mind, isn't he? And Moses said, Thou must, they must go. Uh, we must go and give them sacrifice and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. 26. And we know not what we must give until we get there. So he's saying, now you take your little ones. That's okay. But leave your money. Yeah. And that's what that was back then. Yeah. Your herds, your flocks, your financial stability. It's going to be right here with me. I'm going to take care of it. Well, we've seen how Pharaoh took care of that, right? Yeah. He beat them. They were enslaved. Then he took straw from them. Still made them get the same quota as they always got. So he, he was a tyrant. Amen. Somewhat like our tyrants today we have in office. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They, they, they tax you on everything over and over and over and over again. Isn't it amazing? And now they want to tax you on things that you don't even have or money you ain't even made. Yeah. It's amazing. But, but we're living in a time where we're going to have to do what? Trust God, not man. Amen. They couldn't trust Pharaoh. And, and they realized they couldn't trust Pharaoh. The fact is, the Lord said, I'll bring you out with much silver and much gold. You don't have to stay in the world to make ends meet. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to bring you out with much silver and much gold. You don't have to stay in the world to make ends meet. You've got to get out of the world to make ends meet. The truth is... Amen. The Bible says what it says, and it is the source of all truth. Even if Amen. it offends you, distances you from your family, isolates you from everyone else, makes you lose your job, takes a, uh, takes a stance against your political affiliation, or even if it makes you take a stance against your country. It yep. is the truth over all th these other things. There is always a greater price to pay when we find ourselves opposing the truth. The truth, amen, is what makes you free. Amen. You know they tell you you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Anybody ever heard that? Oh yeah. Amen. John 1 17 it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John 3 21 says, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God, like a moth drawn to the light bulb, just can't help itself. There's something about that light that draws him. Hebrews 10, 23 and 27 says, forsaking the assembly, giving up, uh, amen, keeping your eyes uh, uh, on faith and on God will, will, will put you in a place where God wants you, but forsaking the assembly isn't what you want to do in this time and hour, uh, or any time right. and hour. Amen? Yeah. Amen. amen. John 4, 21 and 24 says, But the hour cometh, and now is. The hour cometh, and now is. When true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit 
and in truth. Amen. Why do we say why do you think we try to get you, you know, in the spirit through praise right. and, and worship? Amen. Right. That that gets you in a place where you can receive the word of God. Yep. Because if you're not in the spirit, you're not going to receive this word. Amen. A carnal minded person is not going to receive the truth from God. You'll sit there and, and it's like I feel today. You know, I feel like it's just falling out of my mouth on the ground for a lot of them. Amen. Amen. You've got to be attentive to the Word of God. You've got to be in the Spirit. Your mind can't be where I'm going for lunch or what I'm going to do after service or what, what I'm going to do with this or that or something. Your mind needs to be stayed upon the Lord Amen. to be kept in perfect peace. Amen. Amen. Let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus. Can someone praise the Lord? Amen. So we need the truth. John 8, 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Matthew eleven twenty nine says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what is righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? It will, const it will be a constant struggle if you're trying to get along with the world and think the world's going to accept you. It's just not going to do that. Amen. Amen. John 8, 41 through 47 says, You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born to fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for ye, I proceeded forth and, gave, and came from God. Neither can I of myself, but he sent me. Yep. Why do, you, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. So he's talking to them. He said, but you can't understand my speech and you can't hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Right. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Right. Amen. If you were of God, you'd listen to me. That's right. If you were of God, you'd hear what I'm saying. That's right. And the truth would make you free, but you're not. Amen. You're doing the business of your father, the devil. You can't make no deals with demons. Because what you do, you're out there on your own. God ain't left you. You left God. Amen? Amen. Amen. God didn't, amen, say, I'm not going to accept you. You said, I'm not going to accept the Lord. Because right. God said, it's not His will that should perish, but all should come yep. to life through yep. Jesus Christ, His yep. Son. So we need to realize, folks, we need the truth. And the truth is, we can't stay in Egypt. Mm. Truth is, we can't bow under the hard taskmasters of Egypt. Mm -hmm. The truth is, God said, let my people go. Amen. We need the freedom to worship. We need the freedom right. to pray. Yep. We need the freedom to pray one for another. And we've seen this in recent years, uh, 2019, when they started the stuff where you can't go to church. You can't hold hands in church. You can't lay hands in church. You can't worship in church. Amen? Yep. Why? Our country is such a country full of such fear. I went to Sam's the other day and all the flatbeds just about were gone and people searching for them and, and you've seen all the toilet paper and paper towels just stacked up as high as they can get them. My Lord, a whole lot of folks must have a whole lot of problems. You need that much toilet paper. Amen? And just, just all kinds of stuff. You know what? If God gave the Israeli people manna in the wilderness right. and water out of a rock, right. and they, amen, plundered Egypt when they left, mm -hmm. they got the gold, they got the silver, they got back pay. That's what it was. Yeah. They had worked for nothing, and they got back pay. Amen. They amen. went out of there rich. Amen. The Bible says there was none sick among them. Their shoes and clothes did not wear out, even though they were in the wilderness, what, 40 years? 
Amen. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine wearing the same clothes for 40 years mm -hmm. and have them never wear out? Amen. Eating that man, glory to God. You know what man means? What is it? Yep. <laughs> Amen. What is it? Well, it's God's provision. Amen. And now Jesus said, I am the man. I'm the bread of life. Amen. And I am the daily bread. And that's why we need the daily bread. Can somebody amen. say amen? amen? Luke 4, 18 through 20. Now I'm going to be ending just in a moment here. But it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive, and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty to them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And He closed the book, and He gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were on him in the synagogue were fastened on him. The gospel is not enticing words of man's wisdom like Paul said it was not. Amen. Nor is it programmed, but it is a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. And until we have the demonstration of the power of the Spirit, we're never going to see a move of God like we need to see. Can somebody praise the Lord? Amen. Matthew 4, 16 through 25 says, The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the regions and shadows of death, light has sprung up. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishermen of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. They gave up their employment, their job, because now they had a greater mission, and that was to become fishers of men, not fishers, amen, of fish. And going on from thence, he saw another two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them, and immediately, not, not later on, but immediately, left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all the sick people that were taken with diverse disease and torments and those with, uh, which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee uh, and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and beyond the Jordan. Amen. We need to follow Jesus. Amen. Just like Moses followed the Lord. Yep. And Moses went down so that my people go. That's what God told him to tell you. Amen. And here Jesus is saying similar things. Go out in the world and unshackle those that are bound by sin. Right. And the only thing that's going to do that is the truth. Amen. Amen. John 4, 32 and 37 says, Say not ye therefore, yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit into life eternal, that both he and the, that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that same truth, one soweth and another reapeth. Mark uh, 16, 15 through 20, you know what it tells us? To go into the world and preach the gospel. But I'm going to leave you with this. Joy, 314. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord, is near in the valley of decision. In the Word of God it says that the harvest is over. Amen. The harvest is past. At that time there is no more chances. No more salvation. I've stood at the coffins of people that have passed on. Thankfully most of them went into heaven. Some probably didn't. But I'm not the judge. I just put them in God's hands. But we need to get busy about the Word of God. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. All right, would you stand to your feet this morning? Go.